I'm going to be talking about commuting to college and this is for anyone who's curious about it or interested or stuck in the situation of commuting whatever the deal is I'm just going to give some information about commuting to college so first off I'd like to say uh, make sure you have a parking pass if you're commuting to college <laughs> like I know people who try to get away with not buying one but you get tickets and they add up and those are a lot pricier than just buying a parking pass for a college and it'll keep you from registering for classes and all too so first of all if you're going to commute the essential besides a car of course is having a parking pass because you know then you can park in your assigned lot on campus and all if your college does that kind of thing but then also you want to make sure you come in at the right time so for me it was kind of like it took some trial and error but i found out like between the hours somehow of like 10 a.m and 3 p.m., there is something magical that takes place where all the parking lots just fill up. Every single parking lot on campus just full. Can't find parking. So I think if you come in early enough, like if you have a 2 p.m. class, come in at 9 a.m. and just study in the library. That's like the best I could say for that advice-wise. You can't really do much about it because, you know, you have to plan ahead for everybody your day. It has to be planned out very well if you're going to commute to school because it, it's work. So... Yeah, <laughs> the parking, I I don't know if there's any more advice I can give of parking besides coming after 3 p.m. if you have a night class or before uh, 10 a.m. if you have like a day class or like for me, I have like night classes, but one of them starts at like 4 p.m. So I get there like right at like 3.30. <laughs> like I had it so well planned out. So just plan really well ahead of time. And then on top of that, with the weather, you want to make sure, because at least I live in the northern United States, so we get a lot of, like, snow where I live, a lot of snow. And, the, yeah, you, you want to deck out your car for the snow if you live in a snowy climate. Because if I didn't have my snow tires and my wiper blades that were all set to go, I'd be in a really bad situation. <laughs> so make sure you have your car all aligned. And have a backup plan, too, and have a kit in the back of your car, like a roadside assistance kind of deal, you know, like a emergency kit. Have, like, three different backup plans. Have, like, family you can go to, a friend you can go to, have some stuff in your car in case anything happens. Because you never know what's going to happen if you're driving that much. At least my college is about 25 minutes away from where I live. So, for me, that's just, like, a little commute. It isn't too much. But I know kids that commute 50 minutes away, and depending on the situation you're in plan for the weather really think about that too and check the weather before you go make sure that you have the necessary sweatshirts whatever you need jackets because your car is what you're going to be going back to throughout the day especially if you have classes like I had one semester where I had classes scattered throughout the day from 8 a.m to 8 p.m at night and that was super annoying but you know you just have to kind of deal with it sometimes because for my major there's so few classes <laughs> but they're like all required so yeah, prepare, prepare, prepare. You can't get enough preparing when you commute. Make sure it's the weather, the parking. Think about everything. Plan where you're going to park. Park next to your last class so then you have less of a walk from your last class. So then, you know, it just kind of works out nicer that way. So just there's a lot of tips and advice out there for, like, getting between your classes and all. <laughs> so that's all I have to say for, like, the parking situation. But... Okay, so this is like outside of the actual driving and commuting itself, but I like to say know your limits too, because knowing my limits was like a problem for me at least when I first started commuting, because I didn't realize that I can't work every single day and go to school every single day and like still do good at one thing, like really good at one thing and hang out with your friends at once. Plan your time accordingly. Know what you're capable of. Because if you're not honest with yourself, life is going to be honest with you. And life is not nice when it's honest. You know, at least you can be nice being honest with yourself. But it's not fun when, <laughs> when life's honest with you. So make sure you're honest with yourself ahead of time. Know how much you can work and know how much you can go to school. And know how much you can handle time with your friends. Test your capability sometime, like before the semester starts or something. Just know what you can handle. You know what I mean? So, I would say that that's probably, like, the most important thing. More important than the parking or anything. It's just because even if somebody's just dropping you off, it's important to know, like, those times and 
when they can pick you up and drop you off and all the little things like that going back and forth to college. Because, you know, it, it's not like you just wake up and you put a sweatshirt on and you walk out <laughs> to your class. You know, there's a lot of preparation that comes into play. And I think that's the biggest thing to know. But it's not difficult. I will tell you, it is really not too difficult. <laughs> it's like, it's not as bad as some people make it sound. You can still do really good in college and be a really successful human being and have commuted to college. You do not need to live on campus to get the college experience. I've had no trouble making friends or anything like that in college. Making friends for a commuter student is not as bad as people make it sound like. You will still get invited to parties. You'll still have fun. You'll still have a group to hang out with just for commuters and people living on campus. If you don't ever introduce yourself to anyone or if you don't put yourself out there first, nobody's going to come to you. That's just a general college, like everyone in college. So if you don't talk to other people, of course they aren't going to talk to you. So just make sure you have that rule of thumb and you'll be all good. There's no trouble making friends, no trouble going out with people places. You will have perfect luck with that. Like as long as you put yourself out there. And you know, I actually like had a stronger bond to the college than a lot of my friends who lived on campus because they had like this computer science lounge at my college kind of like area or like computer and math department, I think. And, um, all the computer science majors would hang out there. So like all of us got to know each other, which was super awesome. And that's how I made all my friends. It's simple. You know what I mean? And all of us commuted. It's not that bad. I think that's usually the big worry when somebody commutes there, like, oh my God, aren't you always alone? And you, you never been to talk to on campus and you just, you know, you're always fretting, running around like a crazy person. You know, it's not at all crazy. It's just as easy on living on campus. College is really the experience that you make it. So if, if, you know, Somebody living on campus, too, they can be in a situation where they're pretty unhappy with what's going on in school. Sometimes they'll just want to be at home, too. And, you know, it, sometimes you have the upper hand with things because, you know, not everyone gets the luxury of, like, living with their parents or something while they're in college. Like, even though you might have to be in that situation, you might be forced into it or something. It's kind of a luxury, too, at the same time, because a lot of people that live on campus still have to, like, pay for food and all, which it's not a neither side is a bad side. They're both great. It's just what works for you. You know what I mean? So I really enjoy like working, saving up my money and all and not having to like while being in college. So then I don't have to worry about like <laughs> too much, too much loans or anything like that. But other people just really want to like be surrounded by college 200%. I like being able to make it my own experience. So like if you're the type of person that likes to pick and choose what parts of something they want. Like, if you just want to focus on like one little area of the college, you can just focus on that one little area of the college. So commuting is a wonderful thing and it's not too much advice, just really I have to in, like emphasize, you have to plan. If you don't plan, oh, and pack your lunch. That's something I forgot, okay. Pack your lunch for sure. Because if you don't pack your lunch, then uh, you'll eat a lot of fast food and I done that my first semester. It was so bad. So just pack your lunch and prepare as much as you can for the parking. Time things out. Time out your commute. Google Maps helpful just because it'll tell you the time. <laughs> so I always used it for to see how long certain routes would take and things. And, you know, prepare for anything life might throw at you on the way. So, yeah, that's all I gotta say. And uh, it's a great thing. Just like living on campus, you get the college experience still nothing changes and don't feel bad if you are a commuter student because I felt so terrible about it at first because I felt like I wasn't getting college and I was so jealous of everyone living on campus because it looked like they were having so much fun and all but honestly once I got settled into it I had just as much fun as everyone else so don't be worried about it and thank you